which one of the following journals publishes articles related to critical theory exclusively so here we have been given four options and the options are option a salmagundi option b diacritics option c kallalo and option d grand street so we have to tell which journal publishes exclusively critical theory and their main focus were only on the critical theory if we look into the first option salma gundi then we must have to mention that uh, salma gundi is an us or uh, american periodical and it was published um, quarterly and uh, if we come into the uh, date of the foundation then we must have to mention that it was first uh, founded by robert boyers in 1965 in this magazine creative poetry creative uh, fictions uh, or art uh, or uh, non fictions uh, poetry short story etc were published one interest one interesting thing we must have to mention here that in the 19th century there was also another uh, journal with the same name salma gundi and uh, this journal was uh, published by washington arvin so so washington arvin was the founder of salma gundi in the 19th century now uh, comes uh, to the second option that is diacritic diacritic is also a journal which uh, is published at cornhill university in association with the john hopkins university this journal is the only journal which only uh, espouses only expresses the opinion of the critics so we can say that it only expresses or exclusively publishes the critical theory critical ideas critical uh, opinions etc now option 3 is uh, kallalo kallalo is a journal uh, and uh, it was uh, of course an african diasporic art and letters journal uh, it mainly publishes the african uh, writers and uh, and uh, highlights their writings and it means focus was uh, the publication of the creative writing uh black literature arts and visual art now look into the option for that is a grand street so grand street is uh, another journal it is also an american journal and uh, it uh, was first published in 1981 and it continued till 2004 and it also publishes dramas fiction non fiction poetry etc the new york times it is also a magazine and according to the new york times uh, this new york times says about grand street that one of the most revered literary magazine of the post war era so here after uh, focusing on all the options so we have to um, tell which journal only publishes exclusively critical theory and the option is option to that is diacritic so diacritic is the right answer of question number 1 if you are new into this channel as per to attend please don't forget to subscribe and share and uh, of course uh, you can leave your comment or opinion in the comment box if you learn in this way you will have surely much more knowledge about various uh, topic or the various options now here comes question number 2 and uh, we can see that in question number 2 there is list 1 and list b in list 1 we see there are some terms and in list b we can see the theorist so now let's have a quick look into the terms the first one is super reader the second one is bio power uh, third one uh, bricolage and uh, fourth one uh, chronotope and uh, the options are michael foucault uh, michael bakhtin michael rifatere and uh, claude levi cross super reader actually the term super reader is quite popular in the modern context uh, super reader means a variety of readers with different competence uh, who have the capability of finding 
uh, density of meaning from any kind of text. For example, if uh, there is a collection of readers and they have uh, their uh, diverse uh, competence and capacity, and if they are given the same text, so what will happen? Surely all the readers will identify diverse meaning of the text. So this is the theory and uh, this uh, super reader theory is also uh, been expressed in reader response theory. And uh, this uh, theory was first uh, uh, published or first uh, propounded by Michael Rifatere. So we can surely say that uh, option A goes with option 3, Michael Rifatere. Biopower is another term and uh, it uh, was first uh, said by Michael Foucault. Uh, in a lecture in College de France and uh, there he said that biopower is a certain kind of power or is a certain kind of influential power which a nation or a state most often uses on a subject to control them. For example, a state or nation sometimes frames some rules and regulations for the benefit of the common people. I take the example of the healthcare. Almost all the nations, almost all the states offer their citizens, their netizens or their subject the health opportunity, the health treatment. So in this way, the nation controls the subjects and they only want subjugation from the subject. So in this way, the common people or the subjects remain loyal to the state or nation power. And uh, this theory was uh, first uh, expressed uh, Michael Foucault. Uh, now look into the option C, that is a bricolage. Bricolage, uh, it mainly focuses on explaining how entrepreneurship emerges in economically depressed or uh, resource poor areas. Or to put it simply, we can say that uh, the bricolage is a theory which only expresses of uh, making something out of nothing. And uh, this uh, theory uh, was uh, expressed uh, by Claude Levi-Strauss. So bricolage goes with option 4, that is Claude Levi-Strauss. Uh, chronotrope. Chrono, we uh, know chrono means time and trope means change. So uh, there is uh, some of the theory which mainly focuses on the change of time, uh, which only speaks of the discourse of the time and space. And uh, such type of theory was given by Michael Bakhtin. Uh, in literary theory or philosophy of language, the chronotope is how configuration of time and space are represented in language or discourse. So this is the main thing that we must have to remember. So, so now let's have a quick look what is the right answer of question number two. And the right answer of question number two is option two. So uh, now here comes a question number three. Which Two of the following strictly follow the parameters of documentation prescribed by the 8th edition of MLA handbook. So we have to tell that uh, which uh, among the four options uh, follow the 8th edition of MLA handbook. We all know that those who are related to the research publication in the bibliography, they most often cite some of the uh, name of the writers or the references. So therefore, there they follow some of the uh, style. So MLA handbook style 8 edition. Here we have to tell which two options uh, follow strictly the 8th edition of MLA handbook. And the options are option A, Nunberg Geoffrey editor. So what does this mean? Actually, we all know that in the eighth edition of MLA handbook, there uh, the name of the writer is written as surname first. So here uh, the name of the writer was Geoffrey Nunberg and his surname was uh, Nunberg. So Nunberg was written first and then put a comma sign 
and uh, then uh, his first name Geo Frederiken and uh, he is the editor in uh, eighth edition editor is fully written just like translator is fully written or translated is fully written and uh, the name of the work is future of the book uh, university of california publication 1969 so this is the option one option b uh, puig manuel so uh, his name is manuel puig and the name of the book is case of the spider roman trans uh, it is uh, not actually uh, written in the eighth edition of the mla book because trans it should be written fully translated so it is not uh, going with the uh, eight edition of mla handbook Option C, uh, Nunberg uh, Geoffrey Ed. Editor here is the abbreviation of Ed. So it does not go with the uh, MLA uh, 8 edition of uh, handbook. Now, option 4, Puig Manuel, Kiss of Spider Roman, translated by Omen, uh, Clunch Vintage Book uh, 1991. So this is also following strictly the rules prescribed by the 8th edition of MLA handbook. So, so far uh, option A and option D is uh, strictly following the uh, parameters of the documentation. So now let's have a quick look. Is there uh, any option uh, with option A and option D? Uh, yes, the option three that is a and d is the right answer of question number three so again i am repeating uh, question number uh, three option three a and d is right answer now here comes question number four just i am uh, trying to make it bigger in size so that you can understand if you are new into this channel if you like this channel please uh, subscribe and share uh, who said of the blank verse uh, quoting an unnamed critic that it is verse only to the eye adding further that it has neither the easiness of prose nor the melody of numbers and the options are john dryden Option B, Alexander Pope. Option C, Samuel Taylor Coldridge. And option D, Samuel Johnson. John Dryden uh, is also known to all of us. And uh, he was born in 1631 and died in uh, 1700. John Dryden is very much famous for his work, uh, MacFlagno. Absalom and Akitophil, etc. And uh, the interesting fact is that uh, Sir Walter Scott once called him Glorious John. So the, uh, this question has been asked several times in internet examination. So we must have to remember the name Sir Walter Scott, uh, the romanticist Walter Scott, uh, who called John Dryden Glorious John. Alexander Pope. Alexander Pope, we all know, is quite famous for his uh, mock epic Rape of the Lock. Uh, there is also another work, an essay on criticism. This uh, great personality, or Alexander Pope, was born in 1688 and died in 1744. After Shakespeare, he is the second most quoted author in the Oxford Dictionary of Quotation. So this is to be remembered here. After Shakespeare, he is the second most quoted author in the Oxford Dictionary of Quotation. And option three, Samuel Taylor Coldridge is also famous to all of us for his romantic uh, poem for his thriller namely uh, Christabel and uh, the suspense of disbelief theory is in fact given a minute depiction by St. Coldridge and uh, once T.S. Eliot said uh, St. Coldridge that uh, Coldridge was perhaps the greatest of English critics 
and uh, in a sense the last. So we must have to remember the quotation who said this and about whom. So it is T.S. Eliot who said about Coldridge that Coldridge was perhaps the greatest of English critics and in a sense the last. And uh, Samuel Johnson, we all know that, uh, is uh, quite famous uh, for his bi biography, The Life of Boswell, etc. And even uh, for his uh, criticism of the metaphysical poetry. Uh, so the right answer of question number four is uh, option four, that is Samuel Johnson. So Samuel Johnson is the right answer of question number four. Now here comes question number five. Uh, which two of the following oppositions are best evoked by Hamlet utterances to be or not to be? This is a famous quotation and uh, this is taken from Hamlet by Shakespeare. So you have to find out uh, the two oppositions to be or not to be. And the options are between life and death. So Shakespeare was in hesitation of whether to uh, kill or not. So this is the situation we have to tell. So between life and death, between uh, action and emotion, between affirmation and confirmation, between uh, doing and abstaining from doing. So if we look into the op options, we can see that uh, option A between life and death, it is uh, also quite true because uh, whether uh, to commit the heinous work of killing or not. So this question most often arises in the mind of Hamlet. So therefore to be or not to be is quite true. Between action and emotion, it does not match with the articulation between affirmation and confirmation. It does not go with the opposition. But between a doing and abstaining from doing, it is also quite true because he hesitates whether uh, to uh, accomplish or not to accomplish. So I think that option A or D is uh, right answer. So now let's have a look whether there is any option A or D. Yes, option A, we can see that option A is the right answer of question number five. That is A and D is the right answer of question number 5. Now here comes question number 6. Which of the following novels is structured into a poem of a triple nine lines preceded by a foreword followed by a commentary and an index? So the question says that uh, among the four options, there is one option which is a novel but structured in the form of a poem and it has uh, uh, 999 lines and it has foreword and a commentary and an index. And the options are ragtime, option 2 or option B, pale fire, option 3, the inner side of the wind and option 4, hourglass. So now let's have a quick look into those options. Ragtime. Ragtime is a novel and uh, it was written by E. L. Doctorow. This novel was first published in 1975. It tells uh, the father-mother's tale and their son's tale and it is set in New York. In fact, it is a historical novel and uh, uh, it tells uh, the story of a wealthy family and uh, their uh, involvement in several heinous activities. Pelfire. Pelfire is uh, a work written by Vladimir Novokov. It was published in 1962. And interesting fact is that it is written in the form of a poem. It has a foreword uh, and a commentary and an index. And the foreword is written by a poet whose name was John Said. So you have to remember the name of the poet John Said. John Said wrote a foreword in this novel. And the another option is the inner side of the wind. It is also a novel 
and it has also another title and the title is the novel of hero and leander in fact uh, in it we find the marlowe's uh, works reverberation of hero and leander this book was written by milorat pavik again i am repeating milorat pavik is the writer of this book we can see the recreation of the myth of uh, hero and leander option c hourglass hourglass is a novel written by Danny Lokis. So Danny Lokis is the writer of this uh, book Hourglass. In fact, uh, Danny Lokis uh, has not written Hourglass, but rather he has written a book uh, Piscanic, a uh, novel. And uh, uh, this work uh, Piscanic uh, was translated into English by Ralph uh, Manheim with the title Hourglass. So the Hourglass is a translation of the Pescanic work and uh, the translation was made by Ralph Manheim. So this is the end of the video for this session. If you like this video, please subscribe and share this channel.